Dear Diary, Greetings. Today, after a long time, I will be talking. I will be talking about what I see as three levels of truth. So what are the three levels? Subjective, Objective and Absolute. Okay? Subjective, Objective and Absolute. Subjective truth. What is that? I go to my farmhouse in the night, open the room, open my bedroom and right there in front of me in a corner I see a coiled snake. My heart skips a beat and I'm ready to jump out of, uh, off the, out of the house, out of my skin, out of I don't know what all. And then somebody switches the light on uh, from behind me and then I find that it is just a coiled rope which is there. The snake disappears from my mind. My heart is still beating fast and loudly. But now I'm clear that there is no snake there. So the snake, while it was there, was a subjective truth. I would be stupid while I believed that uh, there is a snake there to not have taken um, the corrective action at that point in time. There are several such cases which you find. Uh, many people have been incarcerated or given other punishments by even the courts of law, you know, not, not kangaroo, co kangaroo courts. Um, on on based on mistaken identities uh, based on mistaken identification by eyewitnesses there has even been a case I read about when a woman um, uh, you know complained against her uh, father that uh, he had abused her when she was a child and uh, with all the detailed stories that she came up with his father's life was essentially taken away from him he was incarcerated everyone sort of spat on him years later she figured out that um, being a very suggestive person at that point in time in her life she uh, had uh, got all those suge suggestions from some over enthusiastic welfare worker and uh, you know the whole abuse uh, thing it was it actually had never happened um, she went back to the courts and the father was allowed to go but then uh, you know he had lost his life so such things happen they don't happen regularly they don't happen often but they happen often enough for us to understand and appreciate um, how subjective truth works. This is not to say that subjective truth is a lie. Uh, you know, um, like I said, I would be stupid to not take the safeguards to save myself from the snake while it was still a snake in my mind, while the subjective truth in my mind was still that I have a snake lurking in the house so that's about subjective truth uh, yeah just a bit more um, beliefs what are beliefs beliefs are subjective truths uh, they these are truths for the believers let's take the case of Big Bang that is the truth for many physicists probably all of the physicists today but then it is not entirely unimaginable that some other evidence in the next 10 20 100 to 2000 years will come up which will make it necessary for us to postulate a new theory uh, and uh, that, that new theory might actually make better predictions 
and in the view of the new evidences uh, that come up and in the view of uh, uh, the m correct predictions that the new theory has made, uh, we would re relegate Big Bang uh, to, his to a historical curiosity. Another case in point, um, Newtonian mechanics. Today, we do not see it as uh, as objective truth which is valid across the complete range of physical objects that we can find evidence for. Very clearly we considered Newtonian mechanics as objective truth because it fit all the evidence, it made predictions which uh, came true but then it didn't fit so well for very very small objects and for that we now have quantum mechanics and quantum mechanics uh, explains things over the complete range so for us the new objective truth really is quantum mechanics so essentially Newtonian mechanics has been relegated to the position today of uh, a bit lower probably something uh, so if somebody believes that Newtonian mechanics alone is sufficient to explain all mechanics uh, then we would probably not consider him a scientist we would probably say that yeah Newtonian mechanics is subjective truth for him it's definitely an objective truth for a certain range of objects but not for the complete range that we know, understand and have evidence for today. Few other examples. Um, quite some time back I um, you know I've, I've I, I located or I saw uh, what's that called audio cassette with a friend of mine it said Ma Vaishno Ka Itihas. I was kind of taken aback at the title uh, because to me uh, Ma Vaishno like all other with due respect to her and her believers uh, she is a mythical figure as is Zeus or whoever and you don't talk about their history you talk about their myths so for me myth and history is different so I was really surprised uh, and I remained surprised for a long long time until you know a bulb started glowing in my head and I figured out that history after all is his story yeah so for whoever Ma Vaishno is real Haritihas whatever they think her history whatever they think uh, whatever they believe it to be is real as well so yes, it's a truth but subjective truth for those who believe in her. Another case, I have a, a, a friend or I had a friend and cousin um, until he decided that um, there are certain beliefs of mine for which he doesn't uh, want to associate with me anymore. Uh, until that point in time uh, and, and um, we were good friends and um, uh, he is brilliant he is way more intelligent than me I mean he's way more educated than I am he's a post doctoral fe fellow in a technological discipline so you know he's the guy who I who I see like wow I should have uh, uh, aspired to become this guy um, well at one point in time we were having discussion about God and uh, he clearly uh, had trouble distinguishing belief and knowledge and we were having it, the discussion in Urdu and uh, uh, we were using the words manna and janna. Manna um, as in Urdu and Hindi or Hindustani is belief and janna is uh, knowledge or knowing. and. Uh, he would kind of uh, you know flip between the two words and and for him all that he believed was really all that he knew so he is and was a Gnostic so 
um, sure, I mean, I, I uh, continue to respect him even though I keep taking his examples pretty often and I'm sure he doesn't like it. Um, but uh, it's only to underscore uh, that um, a very intelligent man also uh, uh, has difficulty in distinguishing between subjective and objective truths. So, uh, manna or belief is part of the subjective uh, truth and jhana or knowledge is part of the objective truth. So, I've been talking so long about subjective truths and I've started talking about objective truths as well. Um, but what exactly is the difference between subjective and objective truths? One word, evidence. That's it. Evidence. So, London exists. London exists is a deeper truth. It's a deeper level of truth than, say, there is no God with a small g, but God. There is no God, but God. That is the English rendition of the Arabic phrase, La ilaha illallah. Now, that phrase is completely real to all believing Muslims. Let's take two people. One, a believing Muslim resident of uh, London. Another, um, uh, say, uh, a Christian uh, uh, resident of London. Now, the objective truth, London exists, is equally true for both of them. Both of them live there, right? Uh, but then, la ilaha illallah, or there is no God but God, that is a real truth only for one of them, only for the believing Muslim, not for the believing or otherwise Christian. London is a real city for there is a lot of evidence of all that goes into making a city at the site at which London is claimed to exist. Now that is more than what can be said of uh, say unicorns or anal probing aliens or uh, flying spaghetti monster. And its variants going by different God names. So there's a difference, right? There's a difference. For unicorns, no evidence. For London, enough evidence. And this, I can also say, despite never having gone to London, because there are people who have given me evidence of their having gone to London. For I can go to Google Maps or Wikimapia or something or, or uh, Google Earth or uh, whatever and I can actually see uh, that something exists which uh, is a city like any other city and it's called London. So despite all this, now we have to look at the next step. Like I said, there are th three kinds of truths, subjective, objective, absolute. Now we have seen, we have discussed subjective, we have moved on to objective. Now, there is no guarantee that all of London including the residents there are not a mere illusion for me or for all of us. All of us who have not been to London. So, all these objective truths, that is the evidence-based truths, are essentially mediated by mind. For all I know, 
I may be what is called a brain in a vat or we all may be living our lives as in the matrix movies all objective truth all objective truth is mediated by our minds in fact we do not know what something would be if there were no observer let alone no mind to interpret the observations what I can say definitely however is that something must exist for me to experience what I do experience even if it is a mere illusion at the very least my mind must exist even if all illusions are being created by itself without the assistance command or reason of something other than my own mind thus some absolute truth must exist that reality whether it is only in my mind or an expansive one way beyond what we can imagine we can imagine way beyond what we can imagine we can imagine must be the ultimate truth though I or any other mind has no way of knowing since all we know is what we can conceptualize in our minds thus of these three truths the only truth that all of us have access to is the objective truth or in other words the empirical one the absolute truth is unknowable the subjective truth is really anything we fancy absolute truth unknowable subjective truth anything we fancy it is for this reason that I insist that I must keep pushing my limits of the objective truth that I can know it is for that reason that I keep pushing the boundaries of my knowledge my mind mediated objective truth as far as possible it is for this reason that I keep encouraging people to come out of their subjective truths such as religion despite acknowledging and respecting their the religion uh, their value as providers of peace to the believers though I feel that it must be obvious but evidently it is not uh, to any intelligent person that subjective truths despite providing temporary personal peace tend to carry people away from objective truths and lay the foundations for discord within themselves or with others in future objective truth on the other hand has this potential to grant us permanent if not absolute peace how so and this I think uh, is, is, is important to ask that question how so so let's say if I'm in love uh, with a person who is not capable of loving me my subjective peace tells me to sacrifice all that I have for them in the hope of gaining their love temporarily on doing so on sacrificing I will be at peace 
but once the illusion is shattered I will be miserable until I fall out of love with them if however I objectively knew the truth that I will never gain their love I shall certainly have endeavored and fallen out of love before the illusion grew too strong. The subjective truth will have allowed me reduction of misery while subjective one would have increased it. Point to note here. The person that I am falling in love with could well have been my personal God. Goodbye, dear diary.